Well, good morning. It is Sunday morning, uh, March 22nd. We're coming to you uh, via the internet. Uh, glad you've joined us here at River Church. Uh, Lydia and I are sitting here in a, an empty uh, worship space. It's, it's kind, of, kind of weird, isn't it? Yes. This is a, uh, an unsettling time, isn't it? Uh, someone asked me a few days ago, and I said, uh, as, as a pastor, this is the most fluid, meaning ever-changing, the most fluid uh, challenge that I've ever faced as a pastor. But here we are. And one of the things that, that we are dealing with, uh, the Caulfield family, is, is fear. And so we're going to address that today uh, from the gospel, from the Bible, from the words of Jesus. We're going to address fear because we believe that perhaps you're dealing with fear uh, as well. But before we go any further, uh, we're going to pray. Let's join together and pray. God, we come to you this morning asking for your mercy, asking for your favor. God, there is a, a virus that is, that is sweeping the world, that is, that is affecting the human race. Um, we're surprised by it. You're not. We, we trust in the fact that you are on your throne and you are in control and nothing sneaks up on you or takes you by surprise. We ask you this morning for your mercy. We ask that you would stay this virus, that you would stop this virus, that you would kill this virus, that you would be merciful on human race. You would deliver us. We pray for, for our global finances. We pray for our global health. We pray that you would, would put this all back together again, that you would make it all right again, that you would bring a better day and that it would come soon. God, we pray for your healing and we pray for your provision. We pray this in Christ's strong and mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, as I said, we are uh, ourselves dealing with fear. We, we assume that you're probably also dealing with fear. So we're going to talk about the, that today from uh, the book of Colossians chapter 3 in the Bible. I can admit that, that as, a, as a dad, as a pastor, as a man, the thing that I'm uh, fearing the most uh, really, uh, the, the, is the, the financial ramification or all the ramifications of this uh, this pandemic that we're experiencing right now. So, so I've been afraid uh, of how this is going to affect the Caulfield household financially. Um, I've been fearful of the the, uh, the the impact that it's going to have on us as a nation. Uh, us as a church, us as a nation, and then the global impact uh, that uh, we're going to experience. So I've been dealing with that fear. I've been dealing with the fear, of the financial fear, how it's going to affect my home, how it's going to affect us as a church, how it's going to affect our global economy. So I'll, I'll admit that. What are some other fears that we've been experiencing in our house? The fear of running out of things like, for instance, toilet paper or eggs, or milk, um, fear of change, you know, what that's going to look like for us. Um, and, and of course, the economy is also impacting my thoughts. Yes. And then our children, our children have their own set of fears. What have we been, what have we seen in our kids? Yes. Well, uh, Emma is, uh, you know, going to miss her friends because school has been canceled. How old is Emma? She's 15. She's 16. 16 now. <laughs> and, she's uh, driving, remember? <laughs> she she's going to miss her friends. She's going to miss the end of the year um, social gatherings that they normally have. Prom, prom, and um, graduation, things like that. She's anticipating not being able to uh, participate in those. And then our ten-year-old son, Boyce, he's our littlest kid, uh, our youngest child. Uh, he's a pitcher. He's been pitching uh, start, starting this year, and, and Little League just, just, just rolled out, just began, and then it ended. It, it ended so abruptly, and he's been bummed out. When is Little League going to start again? So there, there's this, this, this fear of social upheaval. Our kids are missing their friends. They're just having to stay home with mom and dad, and there's some sweetness to that as well. Uh, so with that in mind, we're going to jump right in, and I'm going to preach to you. I'm going to teach you from... Colossians chapter 3. Uh, let's jump right in, Lydia, if you would read that. 
Colossians chapter 3, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Amen. This first verse is where we're really going to camp out. Actually, we're going to look at all the verses, but, but, but this first verse is where we're going to go first. It says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Now, I want to unpack all three of these verses. There are about four different really big ideas, big statements that it makes. And what we're going to do this morning is we're going to take this in three chunks or three sections. The first section, we're in it right now. Uh, what does this passage say? What does it say for us as believers, for us as Christ followers? And, and it, I think there are about three, uh, four statements that it, that it makes. The first is, may the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. This is a Christian teaching, a Christian ethic. Like, in other words, if you're going to be a Christ follower, you're compelled to believe that Christ can bring peace. But not the kind of peace that, that is fragile and dependent on our circumstances. No, it's a deeper, uh, more long-lasting peace. In times of uncertainty, this is a Christian teaching that we hold on to. Jesus taught it with words like this. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives you, uh, gives do I give you. What does that mean? Let, let, not as the world gives, do I give you. What Jesus is saying right there is the world gives you a kind of peace that's fragile, that is, that is circumstantially dependent. You can have peace when you finally have enough money in the bank. And Jesus says, no, it's not that kind of peace I'm offering you. It is a peace that transcends your circumstances. That is what is available to us as children of God. And then he says, let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Poignant words, applicable words today. Uh, just a few verses earlier in the same chapter, again, words of Jesus. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. That's a famous passage. What is he talking about? He says, in my Father's house are many rooms. What he's saying is, for the Christian life, we have this, we have this eternal perspective. that we're, It's not just the here and the now. It's, it's the eternity aspect of home and heaven and eternity with the Father. Jesus says our peace uh, is based on that. The way that we confront our fear is we realize that we are purpose-built people for eternity. It doesn't just end now. It doesn't just end in the next few months. We have an eternity that we are holding on to. Well, there's a second teaching from this passage. Not only does this passage say, may the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, it, it, it goes on and it says, may the word of Christ teach us. May the word of Christ teach us. Yes, I... You know, we, we said a minute ago that, you know, we, we have had fears about running out of things. And so, you know, I think having f those thoughts of fear and anxiety are a very normal part of being a human. And so, you know, when, when we talk about that the peace of Christ is to rule our hearts, it doesn't mean that we don't have those thoughts, you know, those momentary thoughts of feeling anxious or fearful. But what God wants us to do is to use his word the truth in his word to help us with those fearful or anxious thoughts. And, you know, one that, that many of us may know is from Philippians about being anxious for nothing, but in prayer with um, thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And so in those moments when you're having a fearful or anxious thought, make it a prayer because the Lord knows what you're feeling and he will help you. You know, Lydia, that I, I say often in our, in, in, when I preach, uh, and I, I tell our people, I say, I say, 
Uh, I'm way more like you than you think I am. And, and, and I think we would say that as a family. We're a pretty normal family. And we, we deal with anxiety. We deal with fear. And, and this, this, this teaching, this ethic, is, is, is pointing us back to Scripture. Hebrews 4. For the Word of God is living and active. Sharper than any two-edged sword. You might say it's sharper, sharper than, a, than a surgeon's scalpel. And it's... Air, it's able, therefore, to pierce our soul and pierce our spirit. The point is, right now we have some time on our hands. <laughs> and, and, and the writer of, of, of Colossians, the Apostle Paul, is saying, go to God's Word. May, may the Word of Christ teach you at this time. There's a third, uh, third teaching from this passage, uh, and that is, may the Word of Christ, I mean, I'm sorry, may the worship of Christ give us thankful hearts. Uh, we're not going to skip back and forth to the Colossians passage, but I'll just remind you that it, it said this. It says that we should uh, come together singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in our hearts. What is Paul saying? Paul's saying in times of trouble, it is time to worship. Uh, what is worship? What is worship? I think worship is not only singing psalms and hymns, <clears throat> It's also our very lives that we dedicate to the Lord. It's being a mom. It's being a wife. It's being a daughter. It's being um, in whatever capacity you live and serve. That is worship to the Lord as a children of God, um, as a child of God. I wrote down here that emotional connection with God. That's how I'm paraphrasing worship. An emotional connection with God will fill your thanks tank. Like we've got this tank of thankfulness and it's running, it's running low right now. It's hard to be thankful in times of trouble. And the Apostle Paul is saying, as you worship, maybe that's on your knees in your bedroom. Uh, maybe that's uh, singing to the Lord while you're sweeping the floor. Maybe that's jumping into God's word and studying the book of John. Whatever you're doing at this time, your emotional connection with God is going to fill up your tank with thankfulness. There's a fourth teaching from this passage, and that is, may the name of Christ guide our actions and our words. If we could just review these, may the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. May the word of Christ teach us. May the worship of Christ give us thankful hearts. And may the name of Christ guide our actions and our words. What if God were to use this crisis at this time in your life, to shape up, to shape you, to shape all of us, uh, to shape our actions, to, to shape our, our words. What if God is about to use this, this moment of upheaval and crisis to make us more like Christ? You know, the, 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 the NLT uh, version of this same passage that we read earlier, it, it, says, it says, and whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through him to God the Father. The idea is that, 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 that Christ would, would guide our actions, that Christ would guide our, our words, so that we represent Christ at this time of, of difficulty. So that my kids say, wow, my dad, is, he's acting like Jesus right now. That must be what Jesus is like. Jesus' words, right, or, or, or dad's words right now, they sound like Jesus' words. Dad's actions right now, they're gentle and they're loving. They're like Jesus. So, so this is what this passage in Colossians 3 says. It says, may the peace of Christ rule in your hearts right now. May, may the word of Christ teach you at this moment in time. May the worship of Christ give you a thankful heart. And may the name of Christ guide your thoughts your actions, and your words. Okay, well, as I said, we're going to take this in three sections. So let's move into the second section now. And what I want to talk about now is what does this passage mean in light of my fear, in light of your fear, in light of our fear as a church? And, and, and by the way, some of you that are, that are joining us today, you've never been to River Church. You just heard about it. You jumped online. We're glad you're here. I uh, hope you'll join us every week and on Wednesday nights for our small group Bible study, which will be online as well. Uh, but let's talk about what does this passage mean in light of my fear. And I, 
I have three thoughts, and I'm just going to read them, and then we'll unpack them. Three thoughts. The first one is this. Some things that we fear, it's kind of wordy, uh, some things that we fear, we need not fear, um, because that, that thing uh, might actually be good for us rather than bad for us. So the second thought is this. Some things that we fear, we need not fear because, because of God's promises. And the third thought is some things that we fear, we need not fear because our future has been determined. It has been set. Uh, we, are, we are solid. We're good to go. Um, we've got a future and a hope. Let's, let's unpack these. First of all, some things that we fear, we need not fear because that thing might be good for us, not bad for us. Lydia and I have a few ideas, a few examples of this. Um, I'll, I'll give you the first one would be this. Um, and that would be, um, some of us go to work every day and we find our identity in our work. Or we stay home and we work and we find identity in our work. We, we think that, that we're just, all we're about is productivity. The things that I do make me the person that I am, and I'm valuable because I work hard and I get stuff done. And in the minute when we have to kind of shut it down or slow it down, uh, take a little break, we, we feel miserable. We feel like we're worthless. Um, one thing that, 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 that is potentially good that might come out of this time is that that fear that, that my identity isn't being fed uh, because I'm, uh, I'm not productive. One thing that might be good that comes out of this is you realize, well, that's not my identity anyway. That doesn't make me who I am. I'm way more significant than just the stuff that I do. My identity is found in Christ. My identity is found in the fact that I'm a child of God. So perhaps that fear um, uh, is not actually a, a bad thing at all. What's another fear that maybe is not actually something that we should fear. Well, everything was canceled uh, recently, school and um, sporting events and, um, you know, most restaurants are closed. Um, but home was not canceled. We're, we're all home, right? And so, you know, I think that let's take the opportunity as a child of God to focus on the home because that's where we're all at. We're all there together. And, um, you know, and so I've been praying, Lord, what, what are some things that you want me to focus on here that, uh, maybe I haven't been, uh, had the time to, to focus on. And so, you know, very quickly I thought of a closet that needed to be cleaned out and gone through. And, and I also thought of my photos that needed to be found and organized and put, put into an album. And those are two things that, uh, I can definitely do during this time and, and, and have the kids help me with, with those, um, projects as well. Yeah. Yeah. Another, another, another thing that we fear that, that may actually not be bad for us, um, might be the, the, the fear of the loss of an abundance of wealth. Now I want to be real careful here when I talk about finances, because I realize some of you are out of work right now, and, and some of you are on reduced hours, and you're wondering how you're going to uh, make your mortgage payment or, or buy food, and I, I, I hurt for you, and, and we, River Church, want to be helpful. We want to be able to address those needs among our family, among our people. Uh, but, but the fact is, some of us, uh, or to some degree, we are we are fearful right now because we are fearful that we're going to lose an abundance of wealth. We are wealthy people by the world's standards. We, we know that. We, we have lots of stuff. And perhaps there's a fear that, that I won't be able to go on vacation this year. Or I won't be able to get that new car. And, and I understand that. But perhaps that is actually not a bad thing. Jesus spoke many words of how wealth can be destructive. And how difficult, in fact, impossible it is for a wealthy person to make it into heaven. He, he spoke all the time, Jesus did, of how he himself, uh, the creator of the universe, didn't even have a pillow to lay his head on. He had no possessions. He seemed often to discount, discount possessions. Uh, we, we really esteem possessions. Uh, this is a time where perhaps we are to, to grow in our, in our realization that, that the loss of some of our stuff material stuff, maybe that's not a bad thing. Maybe that's actually a good thing. 
Now, the second big idea here is that some things that we fear, we need not fear because of God's promises. Lydia, what are some promises perhaps that we can hold on to at this time? One that came to mind is, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Um, another one is be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer, let your requests be made known to God. Yes, I think of the fact that Jesus told us, my heavenly father cares for the birds of the air. My, my heavenly father, he cares for the flowers. What happens to the birds? What happens to the flowers? They're very transient. They're here today. They're gone tomorrow. And Jesus said, as much as God cares for those uh, creatures, and he does, God loves God loves his creation. As much as he cares for those, for those creatures, Jesus tells us God exponentially, his, his love for us is exponentially greater. He loves his children so much more. The point is, God is for you. Uh, he, a child of God, he is for you. He is working things together for your good. Romans 8.28 says that. Romans 8.28 says that we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who who are called according to his purpose. You may not see it. I certainly can't figure it out right now, but somehow God is working this out for our good, for our redemption, for our joy. In John 16, Jesus assured us that we would have trouble. We often tell each other, speak as though Christianity doesn't have trouble, but Jesus himself said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. Take heart, I have overcome the world. So, so some of the things that we fear, we need not fear because of God's promises. And the last big idea here is that some things that we fear, we need not fear because our future has been determined. In other words, God holds our future in his hands. Again, that is a, a Christian teaching, a, a Christian ethic that, that, that we see this world uh, in terms of days and months and years, and maybe if we're fortunate, 80, 90, 100 years. Uh, but God sees us as, as eternal beings, that we, we have a heaven uh, and a future uh, uh, for eternity with our heavenly Father. There's this beautiful picture in the Bible, and it's like, it goes like this. There's this table and, and we have a seat at the table that, that we, we used to be strangers and aliens, but God has adopted us into his family and he invites us to the table. And there's a, a chair for eternity, figuratively speaking. There's this chair and, and, and God pulls the chair back and he says, this is your place for eternity. You're welcome at the table of God. You're welcome in, in heaven for eternity. And so we hold on. At difficult times, when we, when we, when we fear, we hold on to the truth that our future has already set. It's already been determined. Okay, well, in this last section, what I want to talk about is how does this apply to my life in the most personal level, in our lives, in the most personal level? How can we drill down deep here and say, here's what's got to change, folks. Here's what's got to change in the Caulfield house. If Colossians 3 is really true uh, and the peace of Christ can rule in our hearts, Here's what's going to change in our lives, in our family, in our church, uh, for us as children of God. So I've got three, three thoughts on this. Number one, I believe we strive to be generous. At a time like this, it seems like we, we shouldn't. It seems like we ought to hold on to our stuff. And yet, and yet the Bible tells us that the generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. That's hard to hold on to at, a, at, a, at times of crisis, and yet it is so true. It's a biblical truth. We should strive to be generous. For example, I encourage you, River Church, I'm not talking about our guests. We're glad you joined us today, but, but our, our, our members, our friends, those of you that call River Church home, uh, I encourage you to, to, to continue uh, if, if we as a church are, gonna, are going to continue to exist, then I can, I, I can continue to thrive in our ministry, um, then I encourage you, we need um, every one of you to begin giving your offerings, your tithes online. 
I'm sitting here in an empty, an empty worship space. Uh, we would typically be passing uh, a, a, an offering plate, no coercing. Uh, we don't spend a lot of time talking about money at River Church, but, but we pass the plates and you give faithfully. Some of you have been giving online for years. Uh, we need every one of you now to jump online, riverchurchrgv.com, and, and to give, to give, to give generously. Um, maybe uh, maybe you haven't have never tried doing that before. Uh, I would encourage you, when you turn this video off today, you as a family, pray, jump online, and the money that you would normally give in the offering plate, go online and give it. Maybe you want to set up a recurring gift. Uh, if, if River Church is going to continue to exist and thrive, uh, continue to support our missionaries globally, uh, continue to pay our staff, continue to pay our rent, continue to meet the needs, uh, the physical, tangible needs of people around us with food and with help, then, then, then it's going to be dependent on uh, you giving now online like you've never given before. So, so let's strive uh, to, to, to kick back against our fear uh, by saying, you know, I'm going to be generous at this time. Second sort of response or second sort of application point would be, let's partner together to meet one another's needs. Yes. <clears throat> Don't forget to continue to serve your neighbor. And um, during this time, and and neighbor meaning me, maybe the people next door, but um, you know it could be your um, your friends uh, in the next town or the people at your church. Um, so continue to serve your neighbor. And one way that River Church is going to help with that is that we're going to set up a virtual storehouse where you, if you have an abundance of something. Um, Earlier, we mentioned toilet paper, eggs, um, milk, um, you know, whatever you have an abundance of that you feel like others may need, go ahead and um, send that information to us on info riverchurchrgv.com. Info at riverchurchrgv.com, yes. And, uh, and just let us know what you have that you would like to contribute to the storehouse. And then um, also, if you have a need, uh, please let us know what your need is. Maybe your need is an item, but also it could be um, for someone to come to your home and, uh, and, and you know, uh, change a light bulb or um, start a, a pilot light or, you know, you physically need someone to come to your home. Please let us know on that same uh, info riverchurchrgv.com space and we'll, we'll get you connected with someone who could come and help you. Just a quick story that I find funny. Maybe nobody else will. But but uh, speaking of hoarding, and we have not been hoarding. Uh, Lydia did creatively uh, find toilet paper when we when we needed it, and just just the nick of time she found it. But what I was going to say was that that several of our children have opened the refrigerator uh, in the last couple of days. I've seen them do it. They open it and they say whole milk. Mom never buys whole milk, <laughs> but apparently you haven't been able to find two percent. So you've been buying whole milk lately. That's right. Yeah, when I, I finally did find some milk after a couple of days of searching and uh, and it was only it was whole milk, which uh, isn't typically what I buy. The third response that I want to call you to. This is the last thought that we have this morning is that that we need to take time uh, to interact with others. Take the time to interact with others. Now, you, how you might ask <laughs> we are quarantined. Well. I want to encourage you at this time to interact with your kids like maybe you haven't been lately. Slow down, take a deep breath, play ball with your kids. I want to encourage you to spend time checking on your extended family. Now, be smart, uh, but, but check on your maybe the elderly in your family. I want to encourage you to get together with another friend. Again, be smart. Make sure you're both healthy. Uh, I probably would only encourage this with our younger crowd, but maybe get together with one friend. And, and spend some time interacting. Uh, don't live in isolation. I mean, yes, we are quarantined, but, but interact with family. Interact virtually with your friends. And, and one of the ways that we're going to be able to do that um, is uh, go to the website, 
riverchurchrgb.com, and you can interact virtually with friends through Bible study. Beginning this uh, Wednesday night, uh, we are going to have Women of the Word. It's, it, we've, been, we've been meeting, ladies, you've been meeting here on Wednesday nights, uh, but now you're going to meet virtually. You want to just briefly talk about that? Yes, you'll be able to take part in a chat um, via the internet. Um, and um, there will be, uh, myself will be here along with um, a couple of the staff ladies and elder wives. And so there'll be a few of us actually together in the church, but all of us can participate through a chat online. It'll be kind of a webinar sort of sort of format where the four or five of you ladies will be on the screen, as I understand it, and then everyone else can 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 join in uh, and take part by chatting. So the four or five of you will be on the screen uh, unpacking. I believe Ephesians four is where you're at this week. Yep. And then everyone else will be able to chat and respond and ask questions. Uh, it's, we're, we're still working out all the bugs, but you can go to our website. Uh, we'll also be sending you a link. And so you'll be able to join in Wednesday night at 6.30, right? And then the following Wednesday night, we'll be having Man Church. That'll be, we'll be rolling that back out. But rather than meeting here, it'll be me and the elders. Uh, several men will be studying here uh, with our laptops. We might even be off-site studying with our, uh, with our laptops. You'll be able to see our faces, hear our voices. We'll be able to, to see you, uh, hear you, or see you as you chat, as you chime in, as you participate. Go to the website uh, and get more information on that. Uh, we'll be sending you a link uh, here shortly. Uh, we are going to be uh, interacting virtually. We don't want to be isolated. Even, even during the time where we are quarantined, we want to interact, if no other way, at least virtually. virtually. The way we're going to end our, our, our time together today is the way that we normally begin it. And listen, before we wrap this up, I just want to say Lydia and I, uh, on behalf of River Church, on behalf of the elders who lead River Church, we just want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, maybe you don't have a church home and you're looking for a place to connect. And maybe this is just kind of an odd way that God has brought you to River Church. We are glad you've joined us. We invite you to tune in every Sunday at 11 a.m. Um, go to our website for more information. Um, go to our website and give River Church people, River Church members. It's secure, it's safe, it's quick, it's intuitive, it's easy. When you turn off your computer, go right there. The way we're going to end our service is the way that we normally begin our service. It's with a statement of faith. This is who we are. This is what we believe. Lydia and I are going to say it out loud together, and you, right there in the comfort of your own home, join us. You, you say it out loud as well. Let's, let's state our faith together. I am a new creation in Christ. I am not who I was. I am no longer condemned. I find my identity in Christ Jesus alone. My past doesn't define me. My job doesn't define me. My accomplishments and failures don't define me. I am a child of the living God, and I rest in his grace. Amen. We love you. Have a good day.